Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Osman Ali and the video which I'm recording is the solution of the exercise 912. It's based on the third inventory valuation technique which is called as the gross profit method. So gross profit method is quite useful method when you do not have information on the unit price or the quantity of the inventory and yet you intend or you plan to or you expect to find the ending cost of ending inventory and cost of goods sold actually so gross profit method will be very useful in that case so let's do an example in order to understand the overall process of the gross profit method and how it can help us to identify the cost of ending inventory so this is the exercise 912 uh, mark price company has used the gross profit ma method to estimate its inventory for monthly repairing purpose and some of the information for the month of the May is given here so it means that their accounting period is only one month and on every month basis they actually used to do their adjustments so there is some information given to us as inventory on May 1 which is the beginning inventory purchase information is given but these are gross purchases six lakh and forty thousand dollars and then freight in is given to us 30,000 which is the transportation cost that you have incurred to bring the product which you have purchased to your manufacturing facility sales 1 million dollar that's the gross sales because sales return figure is given worth 70,000 dollars and purchase discount of 12,000 dollar is also taken by the company now we have two parts part A and part B instructions and in both parts we have to estimate the ending inventory cost of thir at 31st May which means ending cost of inventory of is required in both parts but in first part we have to assume that the gross profit is 30 percent of the sales so whatever is my sales I will multiply that dollar amount with 30 percent and I will get my gross profit figure whereas in the second part it is 30% of the cost which means that I'm going to multiply 30% to the cost and I will get the value here before solving the question I would like to little bit repeat something to you you have gone through uh, a subject by the name of cost accounting and you have prepared a cost of goods sold statement there so this is not a cost of goods sold statement which I'm about to explain but it's just a part of it a partial cost of goods sold statement ladies and gentlemen so just to uh, have a little bit repetition of what you have studied actually in your basic semesters okay of cost accounting so okay so you had this and let me just do this little bit typing and okay so when you were planning or when you plan to prepare a cost flow statement so or cost of goods flow statement sorry so what you do actually is you start with the beginning raw material inventory and you plus per, uh, the material purchased with that and you plus the transportation in cost also if there is any and you subtract if you have received any purchase discount so and then after that what you do is that you do the, the addition and subtraction the remainder which you get is actually called as cost of material available for sale and from this cost of material available for sale is not sale sorry available for use you minus the ending inventory cost and once you minus the ending inventory then the remainder is actually called as cost of material consumed cost of material used while I repeat I was repeating this the sequence I hope it recall it help you to get recalled the cost of goods sold statement which you have learned in cost accounting actually so what I have done after this is the the, the format that I'm gonna use here is I've just shuffled the second last line to the last line and last to the second last look at here beginning raw material inventory plus material purchases plus transportation charges minus if I have received any discount and the equal it's equal to cost of material available for use and from there I have subtracted cost of material used so I got the ending inventory cost here so this is the format that you have already studied if you use this one or if you use this one both of them is okay it's kind kind of like same thing but I'm gonna use the second one because that's the one I needed to solve my question so actually a gross profit method 
you can say it's kind of a partial cost of goods sold statement thing or with that structure with that the sequence that you are seeing in front of you that you have learned in cost accounting subject we will use the sequence in order to solve this question of gross profit so while i'm solving it please keep this sequence in your mind that i will start with beginning inventory then i will plus material purchased with it then i will plus if there is any freight in then i will minus if i have received any discounts and the remainder would be called cost of material available for use and then if material are used so available for use minus whatever i have used the remainder is called the remaining the remaining inventory that i have not used actually so remember this format while i'm solving it so let's let's solve the numerical then now in order to save time i have already typed in uh, the accounts that i'm going to use here but it's it's not a rocket science that's kind of like almost the same structure which is followed here that's why i wanted to explain it before i start the numerical actually okay and even i will color a part of it just to have a little bit matching of everything and i will even color this one so i will explain the colors shortly so if i am using the gross profit method first of all i would always write beginning inventory cost of beginning inventory or inventory at may 1st so at may 1st is actually the beginning of the month so beginning inventory just like this one beginning raw material inventory so what is my beginning raw material inventory inventory may 1st is 1 lakh like and 60000 so i will write here 1 lakh sorry not here in the main column i will write 1 lakh and 60000 dollars so i hope you got this point after this i'm going to plus purchases if there are any purchases actually okay so let's see if i have any purchases yes we do have purchases worth 6 lakh and 40000 dollars so this will also be added to it and i will also match this purchases thing with my sequence as well material purchased the same thing and after that if there is any discount so discount is something that will reduce my purchase bills so it's not something which we add it is something that we must subtract so if i see here in the last of the table purchase discount worth $12000 So we got a minus twelve thousand dollar here. Why minus? Because it's a discount that I have received. It's not something which increases my cost. It decreases my cost actually because I have received a discount. So that will be minus twelve thousand. Then if I have any freight in, so the freight in I have is thirty thousand, and it's a cost actually. So it will be added. So after this we have goods available. okay let me compare now this was the yellow color i referred to that this yellow region this yellow region is the same thing which i wrote here it's the same thing this is also the yellow color material beginning material plus purchases plus freight in minus discount is equal to cost of material available for sale that's the same cost of goods sold that you have learned so cost of goods uh, not sold sorry cost of goods available for use goods available okay so 1 lakh and 60000 plus 6 lakh and 40000 minus 12000 plus 30000 if you solve it it will give you 8 lakh and 18000 dollars actually you can do that and then if you see here i have not highlighted it with the yellow color why is it so it's because that after the value which i got like this is the yellow color which you see at the top and then after that i have left some portion at the top in like blank no fillings because of this thing cost of material used and ending material inventory these two values are not used there after this it sales information sales return information net sales gross profit information is given so this is that extra thing okay that you need to learn here other than what you have already learned in cost accounting cost of goods sold statement and then when i came back to the yellow color it means i went to the same format at the end so what's the thing i need here now the thing i need here is cost of material used 
I need to answer this question cost of material used. If I convert this thing into a merchandising terms, let's say, so cost of material used means what? It simply means, ladies and gentlemen, cost of goods sold. Because we do not use material in merchandising concern, we just buy them and sell them. So it will be cost of goods sold. So this is the cost of goods available for sale then. This will be cost of goods sold and you can, the remainder would be called the ending inventory. It's quite logical. I will even explain it once more. So we had $50,000 worth of inventory available. And then we purchased, let's say, 40,000 worth of more inventory during the year. And then we incurred a, let's say, $1,000 cost on transportation. There was no discount received, let's say. So if there, sorry, if there is no discount received, then it would be $0. And then we can find the total of it. So the total would be that we have $91,000 worth of inventory which is available for use. Now let's assume I'm not a manufacturing concern, I'm a merchandising concern, so I would simply say available for sale. So we have worth $91,000 of inventory available for sale. Out of this inventory, we will sell some and we will not sell some, depending on the business condition. Let's assume that inventory worth $61,000 were sold or oh, let me put it as a minus so inventory worth $61,000 were sold remaining was not sold how much remaining $30,000 remaining so actually I'm doing the same thing in a little twisty manner little twisty manner so why these four lines extra? These four lines are extra in order to find this $61,000. Let me highlight it. I want to know this $61,000 actually for that purpose I am having these four lines extra. So, what is my sales? My sales is $1 million you can see here. So that's my $1 million sales. And do I have any sales return? Yes, I do have a sales return. So if I have sales coming back, it means it's minus value here. So what is my net sales then? One million minus 70,000. So my net value or net sales are nine lakh and thirty thousand dollars. You can see there. Then what was given to me in part A as I'm solving part A, the information given to me was that we need to calculate the ending inventory cost, assuming that the gross profit is 30% of sales. Means gross profit is 30% of sales. By the way, from this net sales, we subtract cost of goods sold and then we get gross profit. If I do not have uh, cost of goods sold, so even from the sales, the same Gross profit can be subtracted and you will get CGS. It's basic mathematics, that's why I'm not explaining it. When you do practice with yourself, you can do it very easily. I am sure of that. So, 30% of my sales. Now, 30% is 0.30 of my net sales. How much is my net sales? $9,30,000. So, 30% will be multiplied with $9,30,000. And that's it. We got our gross profit figure of two lakh and seventy nine thousand dollars. So this is actually my figure here, uh, two lakh and seventy nine thousand dollars worth of gross profit. Now, look at this. I want to calculate cost of goods sold. So it's very simple. What I will do here is nine lakh thirty minus two lakh and seventy nine thousand. When I subtract it, you can do that and you will get six lakh and fifty one thousand dollars so this will be your cost of goods sold you can even do the equation of this thing like the equation it's it's not this thing explained here but you can see here sales is equal to cost of goods sold minus gross profit so if I want to know what is my gross profit then I will take uh, sorry cost of goods sold then I will take gross profit on the opposite side of the equation and the equation will become sales minus gross profit is equal to cost of goods sold. This is what I just did here. 
and I got my gross profit six lakh and fifty one thousand dollars now this gross profit you can see yellow color came back and even the last one is also the yellow color so these this six lakh fifty one thousand is actually this sixty one thousand okay and the ending inventory is thirty thousand which was calculated like we subtracted sixty one thousand from ninety one so we got thirty same sequence I'm gonna follow here we are gonna minus six lakh fifty one thousand which is the cost of goods sold you can say sales at cost or cost of goods sold we can subtract this CGS from the cost of goods available for sale eight lakh and eighteen thousand when you subtract it ladies and gentlemen you will get a value of one lakh and sixty seven thousand dollars actually and this one lakh and sixty seven thousand dollar is called as your cost of ending inventory so you just saw I replicated this the, the, the sequence here except these four rows which is extra and I did it only to calculate this cost of goods sold thing because I was having no no options other than this technique so that's how you will calculate the gross profit or you in value the inventory so this is the value of the inventory present with you at the end of the year and this one lakh and sixty seven thousand dollar will actually be shifted where it will be shifted to the balance sheet of the company where the six lakh and fifty one thousand nine lakh thirty two seventy nine seventy thousand one million all of these figures are the part of the income statement actually in fact this is also the part of uh, profit and loss and trading accounts so that's part A. Now in part B, we are required to do the same thing. But this time, instead of assuming 30% of the sales, we have to assume 30% of the cost. That's the gross profit. So I have little bit calculations done here prior to recording the numerical. I will come to these calculations shortly because these calculations will help us to understand this 30% of the cost. So before we start, I have already put it all the accounts that I need it's the same thing I just copied it from here and I pasted it, it here actually except this one thing only this one thing it's written here nine lakh and thirty thousand of sorry thirty percent of nine lakh and thirty which let's say what is this nine lakh and thirty it by the way it's my sales if you can see here this is my sales so it was thirty percent of the sales and here is 30 percent of the cost this word cost and sales that's the only change that we have here rest everything remains same so in order to save time what i will do is i will copy all of these values because they are same as i already said they are same so i will paste it here so we got eight like and eighteen thousand till here that's fine this is that yellow color which i was referring to and the last two lines are also the yellow lines then these are the four extra things now what is my selling price and sales return so my sales were I can even copy it from the above portion as well but my sales are 1 million and my sales return are 70,000 I hope you remember that when I minus 70,000 from 1 million I will get a value of 9 lakh and 30 so this is also exactly same thing now that's different it says gross profit is 30% of the cost let me explain this thing to you people now now the the equation works like this that sales is equal to cost of goods sold plus gross profit you know that if let's say I say sales is equal to S and cost of goods sold is equal to C then plus what is gross profit gross profit is it's written here gross profit is 30% of cost it means this gross profit will be 0 0.30. 0 0.30 means 30% of C. C means cost of goods sold. So I've just abbreviated sales with S, cost of goods sold with C, and instead of gross profit, I have put it the value here, 30% of C. Now if I, I solve it, 30% of C means 30% multiplied by C. So this will become 0.30C. You know the, the basic algebra and mathematics things. Then I will plus this C if there is nothing, so obviously there is one with this 0.30C. So it will become 1.30 C and obviously I want to know cost of goods sold because I told you that $61,000 is that place that the blue line is that thing for which I need to solve the question.
So if I want to know the C, then the remaining part should be taken on the opposite side. C 1.30 is multiplied with C, so on this side, if it comes, it will be sales divided by 1.30 because this multiplication will convert to division. And then I will put the values. The sales figure is how much? Nine lakh and thirty thousand dollar divided by 1.30. So we got a cost of goods sold figures of how much? Seven lakh fifteen thousand three hundred and eighty-five. So that's my cost of goods sold figure place. If you can see sales at cost or cost of goods sold, I will very confidently write this value here: seven lakh fifteen thousand three hundred and eighty-five dollars. You may be a little bit confused that okay, you got the cost of goods sold figure, but we did not have any gross profit value here. How? Uh, what will be the gross profit value then? So for that, I have done this one extra calculation. The relationship was that sales is equal to cost of goods sold plus gross profit. Now I do know my sales figure is nine lakh and thirty thousand dollar from here, and I also know that my is equal to, and I also know my cost of goods sold state uh, value is seven lakh. 15,385, I shifted it here, but gross profit is unknown to me. So I will shift this cost on the opposite side and like if it comes to the opposite side, it would become 930 minus 715 and this will be equal to 214,615. So this is actually what this is my cost of goods, so, uh, sorry, gross profit figure. I hope you got this point. Do a little bit of practice and it will be fine with you because this is just basic mathematics. Now that I do have cost of goods available for sale and cost of goods sold, so let's subtract that just like I did it in the previous numerical. So it will be what? Eight lakh and eighteen thousand dollars minus seven lakh fifteen thousand three hundred and eighty five dollars. This will give me a remainder value of one lakh two thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars, ladies and gentlemen. So you saw, with the same data, with the same dollar amounts, as I assumed gross profit to be 30% of the sales, my ending value is different. And 30% of cost, my ending value is different. So we choose it whichever method we would love to choose for our business organization. Both methods have its own plus and minus. Uh, but just keep that in mind that we should be consistent in what we are doing if we are using third, the gross profit on sales, so then we should be consistent every year. Otherwise, if we are using gross profit as 30% of the cost or any percent of the cost, so then we should be consistent in that case as well. So ladies and gentlemen, just as a summary, we were given a gross profit method numerical for inventory valuation. This is one of the method which is used to find the value of ending inventory and that we shift to the balance sheet. Now this method, it's kind of similar to the cost of goods sold statement, not a full statement, but a partial statement. And at the start of the numerical, I said, I just revived this structure for you that we start, every cost of goods sold statement starts with the beginning raw material inventory, and then we add purchases with it. We also add freight in if there are any. We will minus any purchase discount, and we get cost of goods available for sale. And from there, then we subtract cost of goods sold and you get ending inventory. The cost of goods sold statement that you have learned is for manufacturing concern. If you remember, here I discussed manufacturing concern. That's why I use the word partial cost of goods sold. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the gross profit method. I hope you got the concept. Thank you very much and stay safe.